Prayer for the 2022 National and Local Elections Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, Politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue to linger in the joy of the resurrection of our Lord. And as we celebrate this Mass, let us open ourselves to the new life that our risen Lord offers to us. Let us now be sorry for our many sins and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, you we, we bless you, you we, we adore, adore you, you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them. By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you, healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Please stand. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the other side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though they were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, in our responsorial psalm today, our response was the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. This is from Psalm 118. And in our first reading today, Peter, in his preaching, also quoted this psalm to refer to Jesus who was rejected, persecuted, and killed. But in the end, in the resurrection, Jesus proved to be the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. What does this mean? It means that what was thought of as insignificant, what was considered as unimportant, what they thought was something that they could just easily 
get away with turned out to be something essential, something necessary. Yung akala nilang walang halaga, yung inakala nilang baliwala lang sa bandang huli, yun pala ang kailangan, yun pala ang magliligtas sa atin. And this is also something that we saw in our gospel on this Friday within the octave of Easter. In the story that we heard in our gospel, who recognized Jesus? Sino ang nakakilala kay Jesus? Not Peter, who was the leader of the group of disciples, it was the beloved disciple who, according to, to tradition, is the youngest among the disciples of Jesus. It was the youngest disciple and not the leader who recognized and declared it is the Lord. Hindi yung pinuno, hindi yung mga nakatatanda, hindi yung magagaling ang nakakilala kung sino si Jesus. Yung pinakabata sa kanila ang siya pang nagturo sa mga nakatatanda sa kanya si Jesus yun. Someone who is insignificant turned out to be the one who could recognize the presence of the risen one. And this does not come to us as a, as a surprise, my dear brothers and sisters, because in the story, stories of the resurrection, Jesus would always surprise us Kanino ba siya unang nagpakita? Who was given the privilege to encounter for the first time the resurrected Christ? Not to Peter, the leader of the disciples, not to any of the disciples of Jesus, but to someone considered insignificant by the society to Mary Magdalene, a woman. And isn't it that in one part of the Gospel of St. Matthew, Jesus prays to the Father, and Jesus tells the Father, I praise you, Father, for you have hidden the mysteries of the kingdom to the wise and the learned and reveal them to children. To those considered insignificant, to those who are voiceless, to the simple and to the humble. Ang mga dakilang hiwaga ng ating pananampalataya ipinapahayag ng Diyos hindi doon sa magagaling at matatalino, kundi doon sa mga mapagpakumbaba, sa mga simple, sa mga itinuturing na hindi mahalaga sa ating lipunan. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, our risen Lord, teaches us to listen to the voiceless in our society. To listen to the voiceless even in our own families. Do we listen to our children? Kapag gumagawa po ba tayo ng mahalagang desisyon sa ating pamilya, may tinig ang ating mga anak 
o ang tingin lamang natin, susunod lang kayo sa gusto namin nakatatanda. Mas alam namin ang tama dahil mas matanda kami kaysa sa inyo. Makinig kayo sa amin. At madalas, sinasabi ng mga nakatatanda sa mga mas bata, papunta pa lang kayo, pabalik na kami. Ibig sabihin, maniwala kayo sa amin. Sundin, sundin ninyo kami kasi alam na namin yan. Pero paano kung iba yung pupuntahan namin sa napuntahan nyo? Paano kung iba yung mundo namin sa mundong alam ninyo? Kaya mahalaga na makinig kahit sa mga nakakabata. In the rule of Saint Benedict, he would always remind his monks that when there is a decision to be made, everyone in the community must be listened to, even the youngest member of the community. Because according to the rule of Saint Benedict, it is usually to the youngest that God reveals the best solution. Do we listen to the youngest, to the smallest, to the simplest in our society? Mga minamahal na mga kapatid, makinig tayo hindi lamang doon sa mga matataas, mayayaman, nasa posisyon, sa mga malalakas ang tinig. Makinig tayo higit lalo sa mga walang tinig at sa mga pinapatahimik ang tinig. Ano kaya ang sinasabi nila? Sino kaya ang pinaniniwalaan nila? Sino kaya ang kinakampihan nila? O sino ba ang iniindorso nila? Makinig tayo sa kanila nagsasalita ang Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Baka yung mga hindi natin pinapahalagahan, hindi natin pinakikinggan, pinagpatawanan, baka sa bandang huli sila pa ang kailanganin natin. Let us listen to the many Johns, the many beloved disciples. Let us listen to the many Mary Magdalene's. Let us listen to the many stones we reject. For in the end, they might turn out to be the ones who will tell us, It is the Lord. Please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ stays with us to guide the work of His Church and to be with us in all our struggles and trials. Let us pray to Him with complete trust and let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the whole Church may be renewed by the grace of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace which the risen Lord brought to his apostles be given to the people of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may help the needy and feed them in body and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have gone before us may be welcomed to the shore of eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers. We also pray for all the intentions offered in this Mass. God our Father, you restored us to yourself through the resurrection of your Son. Hear our prayers and strengthen us in giving witness to our Easter faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our truth and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ignorance, deceptions, lies, and every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, our risen Lord. Behold him, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof. roof. But, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessings now and forever. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance now and forever. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.